What's up guys? We learned an important lesson on this week's Fix It Friday, and that lesson is not everything can be fixed. You guys know the little engine that could? This is the little PS3 that couldn't. Stay tuned. doing was salvaging the outer shell of the original USB connectors and taking an old USB plug and patching it inside where that original connector was uh, but it didn't mean gutting out the original so we lost a little bit of space there um, this little metal bar here broke in the process uh, I actually just broke that the rest of the way off because it kept grabbing the USB drives on the way out it was really annoying so I took it off this is easily some of the worst solder I've ever done. But it's all connected correctly. And I had to make individual single strand jumpers for each of these plugs. Uh, I'll show you more once we get it all put together. It doesn't look quite as bad um, from a distance, but up close it looks really, really bad. I'm gonna throw some hot glue on the back of this thing here. Try and make sure these pins don't move. Make sure the socket doesn't try and run away while we're using it. I really didn't want to use hot glue on this, but with as loose as that is, uh, those joints just aren't really strong enough to hold up in our normal conditions uh, if we don't hot glue it. So, hot glue it is. And while that's setting, we're going to apply the thermal compound to these heat sinks and start putting that back together. Hot glue is cooled off. Uh, we're gonna throw some CPU thermal compound on here. I'm still using the not twist stuff I used in my PC build. Uh, and I'll link that in the corner up here. Uh, these are huge, huge, huge dies we need to do. So we're gonna do just do a moderate sized. Well, I guess we're not using any more on this one because that's all we got. Some old tweezers I don't use anymore. So I guess we'll need to slap this on there and see if that's enough, or if I need to postpone this until I get more, more thermal paste. So here's our heat sinks. Got those cleaned off, and go on here like this. It's actually much easier if you do it upside down. always forget this, the I.O. side has to go in first because it's a little lip back here. always forget that. It's pretty important. And then it just notches itself in place. Just give it a couple squishes. Now let's take a look at that and see how well it spread. It feels like it spread well. That looks fine. Uh, when we, it'll actually spread even more once we get the back plate and everything on here. Uh, but it is spreading in a nice pattern that we're, we're looking for, so that's good. So the bottom side actually has two built-in back plates. It's pretty spiffy. You do want to make sure you tighten these evenly as you go. You don't want to snug one down in there. You want to bring them up pretty evenly to apply even pressure across it. Uh, and that will help that thermal paste spread out even more than it already is. On this side, we've got a few connectors to connect before we put it back in the shell. Uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth our antennas just go here. Just pop right in here. And I hate these little connectors because I have ginormous hands. So I like to use the needle nose pliers to hold the wire and line up the button and then push the button in place with my finger. That way I'm not doing it completely blindly. All right, let's start in the shell. There's not a lot interesting about putting it in the shell other than you need to make sure you put the IO in first again here. Uh, it is a little bit stubborn if you don't. Nice ginormous power supply unit. Uh, I like in this one how they have the heat sink, the fan blowing across the GPU and the CPU and then out across the power supply and out of the unit. Uh, I really like that design. All right, so the power in there, smaller power section here. Uh, we actually don't need the disk drive to do a test power on. Uh, we do need the hard drive though. 
Um, the hard drive is actually not formatted currently, which is what we were originally doing today, but I decided to go a little further and try and actually finish fixing this thing. So, uh, we are going to be correctly formatting the hard drive on this thing today. Um, we'll get there in a So in the end, I got a lot of things fit worked on this thing, working on this thing, and then it just got progressively worse and worse and worse and worse um, to the point where it actually won't even give a video display output on either the HDMI or on the um, or on the analog cables. Uh, one of the nice things was once I got it hooked up after the mods were done. Uh, the USB port did work. I had the, the drive plugged in, it was flashing, reading the drive properly. Um, and I started getting some weird artifacting in the video output. So, I opened it back up, everything looked fine, traced all the connectors, all the traces were fine, um, no swollen capacitors, no drivers out of place. Popped it back together, and the only display it would give me was that like black image with full of artifacts, uh, which I'm not sure if I got clips of or not. You'll have seen it already at this point. Uh, if I did or not, but just a black screen full of like weird artifacting and it just wouldn't do anything. So I tried hooking it up to a different TV, like the my HDMI in the bedroom, um, and then it just wouldn't give a signal at all. Reset it back to the factory settings, put it back in safe mode, and no video output. And I haven't had video output since. Um, so no idea what happened there. It would turn on, and you would see the, the LEDs flashing on the, the drive and everything and I just never would give a video output. So I opened up again, did literally nothing but open it up, look at the boards, reassemble it, and now it won't turn on at all. You hit the button, fan whirs up, and it shuts off. And that's it, that's all it is. So this one is officially declared dead, not gonna be able to be fixed by me. Uh, it's not gonna be able to be fixed by anyone unless they can pull the board apart and do deep electronic diagnostics on it, which I am definitely not set up to do. I don't even have an oscilloscope in the, in the office here, so um, it's beyond my care. But um, the good news is this hard drive is still good, and this is a really cool box, so we could probably be doing something with this actual shell in the future, but I have no idea what yet. So if you guys have any ideas of what we can do with the shell of the PS3, put it down in the comments. Let me know. I want to see if you guys feedback on these things. Uh, if it's something you guys want to see, uh, that'll definitely be up for doing it, uh, instead of just me doing something stupid like putting a Wii in a toaster, which if you haven't seen, check it out. It's pretty damn cool. See you in the next one.